Welcome into the Tool Shed Live. I'm Warren Seegers. Once again, it's Thursday, 9 o'clock, and here we are doing the live stream on Facebook. Uh, tonight with me, it's going to be a hot show. It'll be on fire, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I have Mike McLean, who is the battalion chief at the Bago Fire uh, Department. It's a volunteer fire department, too, is it? Or uh, It's a combination department. Uh, we okay. have full-time staff and we have volunteer staff, both. Okay. So... Tell me a little bit about yourself and your career as a firefighter. Uh, well, I've been a firefighter for a little over 10 years now. Uh, I've been a paramedic for about the same amount of time. Uh, I started off like most firefighters do. You start off as a volunteer, you learn uh -huh. the ropes, you learn all the basics, you work your way up. Eventually you get hired on somewhere, hopefully, and uh, the rest is history. Okay, so now, firefighters aren't what we used to think firefighters were. Mm -hmm. You don't just fight fires anymore. I mean, there's more to the job than that, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's a ton of things we do. Um, actually, we have ambulances at our fire station, too, so we do a lot of medical calls. Uh, we run two paramedic ambulances. One is a backup, but okay. it's staffed at all times, um, so we do any kind of 911 call there is. Wow. So whether or not it's EMS or rescue, uh, like when we had a bunch of flooding here in the area, we mm -hmm. did a bunch of river rescue and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Um, car accidents, obviously, and of course right. fires, PR events, you know. Uh, contrary to popular belief, <laughs> right. we, uh, we do uh, rescue cats once in a while, so right. <laughs> not too really? often, but yeah, I've rescued a couple cats. <laughs> so, that, so that's not a, th I mean like in a tree or? Yeah. So um, tell me about a cat rescue. Well, it's just it's just good PR, you know, public relations. I mean, we want we don't want to see any animals hurt, obviously, right. but we'll get a call. You know, usually it's not a nine one one call. They'll just call into the station, and we'll run down there and you know do our best to try and help rescue a cat or whatever stuck in a tree. A tr tree, or maybe <laughs> do they ever get like the sewers and stuff? Or? Yeah, actually, uh, I had a rescue at one of my other departments where we had three kittens in a sewer oh. drain, and they were stuck in the middle, and they weren't come out. They were being stubborn, so. <laughs> Uh, we uh, coaxed him out of there with a little bit of water, and, and uh, we were able to rescue him. A little bit of, I mean, you guys got big hoses. Yeah, I mean, yeah we, we didn't blast them out, <laughs> <laughs> but we just kind of filled the drain oh, up with water, God. and it kind of, they don't really like water too much. So, so they, they just, just went to the other side, and, got yeah, it. and that's how we scooped them up. Wow, that, that's kind of interesting, because I always thought the whole, you know, firefighter saving <laughs> cats was like a cartoon thing. Yeah. But that's a, it's a real deal, huh? Yeah, well, we kind of look at it that way, too, but we still do it. Okay. <laughs> Well, the real reason that we got you here tonight um, is because we want to talk about home safety and, and fire safety in the sure. home. Um, so what are some of the things that, just right off the top of your head, that you can just say, um, things that you think are important that most people just totally space out and don't do anything about it? Well, um, fire extinguishers, I think, are important in the home. A lot of people don't think that they should or need to have a fire extinguisher in the home. Okay. Um, but if you're able to put out something before it grows into something major, I think that's a good way to go. Keeping one in your kitchen, I think, is, you know, the obvious choice. That's where you have a lot of things that uh, could catch on fire. Right. Uh, same thing with your garage. You keep fuels and stuff in there in your basement where your utilities are um, for electrical, you know, and things like that. And there's different types of extinguishers, and usually the salesman can help you out with what types you need. Okay. So earlier we were talking about uh, when I came over to visit you, sure. um, I was telling you that my son and I were having this kind of discussion, kind of like a debate where <laughs> it's our fire extinguishers, do you replace them by a date or is it by the gauge on it? And yeah. I was, he was like, no, you got to replace them when, they're, when they go bad, <laughs> you know, they expire. Yeah. And I'm like, no, because it has the gauge, it's, yeah. you can read it. So what, what's the deal on that? Yeah, fire extinguishers don't really have an expiration date, um, but they do have a yearly inspection that you should get done on them by a qualified company. And there's all okay. different kinds of companies, probably the Yellow Pages or, well, most people don't even know what the Yellow Pages are anymore. So <laughs> right. Just Google it. <laughs> yeah, Google it. The easy <laughs> but, uh, way to find it. I'm sure you can find a local company. Uh, we have a couple that we use actually for our fire station. And uh -huh. They'll come in and inspect them, make sure there's no damage to them, make sure they're still functional, they're pressurized to the correct pressure, those types of things. Right. So let's, let's talk about two areas that you just mentioned, garages sure. and the kitchen. Yeah. To me, those are probably are those where most home fires start. I, I wouldn't say most. There are several that start there. Uh -huh. um, you know, stoves that, you know, something cooking on the stove that somebody forgot or something in the oven that uh, we've had it where they accidentally put it into cleaning mode. And they have oh. food in there and it's locked and it's full blast heat and it ends up catching it on fire in there. Oh, wow. So uh, we do have some start in there. We have, you know, lawnmower fires or car fires that start in the garage and then they spread to the rest of the house. Wow. Um, 
Some are electrical, you know, there's uh, some bad wiring or some critters chewing on your wires up in the attic and, and, boom, and that does fire. it. Uh, a lot of times in the springtime too, and we always put out something um, early in the year when the winter comes or when the cold weather starts to check your uh, flues and, and your chimney pipes and stuff for any kind of buildup if you're using any kind of like a wood burner. Okay. Uh, a lot of times we'll have some issues with that, some backup, and right. uh, a lot of times, you know, a fire can start that way too. So. Okay. So what are uh, some safety tips just for the garage? What are some things? Cause, you know, you were talking about chemicals. I mean, how should you handle that stuff so you reduce the risk of a fire? Uh, well, in the firehouse, we keep the, all of our uh, fire-related liquids and chemicals and stuff in a special cabinet that's designed for that. Okay. Um, you can buy them. They're, I don't know how expensive they are, and I don't know if they're practical for the, for the typical homeowner. Mm -hmm. um, but... Just maybe not storing them all in one spot, you know, not having 38 gas cans in your garage, maybe Correct. just one gas can, you know. Uh, lawn mowers, a lot of times when people put them away, they'll have some dry grass in them or something uh -huh. and that can spark things up. But as far as the fuels and stuff, um, like in my own house, I realized I had a lot of paint cans under okay. some wood stairs and I immediately removed them when I realized that I have a huge fire hazard right under the stairs where I may need to escape. So, right, okay. So things like that to keep in mind. Common sense stuff, but, you know, just kind of look over your house and see where your danger spots are and how you can kind of mitigate that stuff. Gotcha. So let's talk about fire alarms now. Sure. Now, what, what do you think is more important, fire, alarm, fire alarms, extinguishers, or a combination of both? I think it's a combination of both, truthfully. Um, I think alarms should be number one on your list. Uh, there's an old way we check the batteries to make sure the batteries are always good. Whether you have a wired system or not, mm -hmm. all fire alarms, uh, your little smoke detectors, um, will have a battery backup. And okay. we always change them when we change the time. That way it's uh -huh. really easy to keep track. Which so when you spring ahead, spring ahead, fall behind, that's when you should be changing your batteries. So both your, times that we change. Yeah, I would change them both times. Batteries are inexpensive. You know, the, the cost of a life you can't, you know, justify with or not justified by just replacing a battery for $10 or whatever it is. So what about the, the alarms themselves? I mean, do they last forever? Uh, no, uh, most alarms have several different functions. They either mm -hmm. have, um, well, they don't all have multiple functions, but some detect smoke by, right. by a photocell that uh, will detect if the air is getting included with smoke. Okay. And then they have others that have like, uh, they detect a rise in heat and they'll go off. Um, so a lot of them have those, at least those two combinations. Okay. Those sensors eventually will go bad. So uh -huh. you kind of need to keep an eye on them. Um, some of the newer ones will have a special alert when they're bad, especially your CO2 detectors that right. you just put on the wall or whatever. Um, they'll just have a specific beep. And when you take them off and look at the back of them, you can see if it'll have an actual expiration date and you'll oh, okay. need to replace them by somebody qualified. Um, a tip that I had heard about fire alarms, and it's, <laughs> I guess it's kind of true, but when you buy them, they're like super white. Yeah. But when they start getting that dingy <laughs> tinted brown color, that's time yeah. to replace them all. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a good way to do it when they start to turn yellow and discolor. Absolutely. Yeah. So fire alarm, um, I think for most new construction, you have to have fire alarms Absolutely. in your in the, yeah. in the structure. It's code now, I think. Yeah. But what if you're buying an older home and there's no fire alarms in there um, and the person wants to up, update the home and put mm -hmm. fire alarms in, where is the best place to actually put fire alarms at? So there's a whole lot of different opinions on this. Um, my personal opinion from all the fires I've seen is to have a smoke detector in every room. Okay. It's just the safest way to go. Every room, every hallway, just everywhere that you can think of. Um, some people will say just have it in the hallway, but if you have a fire that starts in a room, especially with a closed door, it's going to be contained to that room for a while. Right. So it may not reach that smoke detector, you know, before it's too late. So I would have one in every room. Obviously, every bedroom is where I would start. Okay. Um, definitely every hallway, because um, as things move down a hallway, for instance, if your family is sleeping, you know, right. it'll work its way down the hallway and get picked yeah. up. Um, a lot of fires start at night, um, uh -huh. so you want to have really good smoke detectors to wake you up and make sure they're working. Um, that's usually when they start, is after people are home, they've been doing whatever they do in their normal routine, mm -hmm. they go to bed and then something happens, you know, with the right. heat or with something cooking or something in the trash or you, you just never know. In this uh, construction that we did here, I mean, every room, 
I just went all out. That's the absolute put, safest uh, way to go. Fire alarms in. And uh, another thing too, with the newer fire alarms, even it has a, a backup battery. Mm -hmm. These things will drive you nuts. Even though it's hardwired, mm -hmm. when those batteries go low, they just they'll beep oh, like every minute, yeah. like you know, change me, change me. So it's not like you you can just ignore them anymore. Yeah. If you do the spring ahead, fall behind battery changes, that won't ever be an issue. Yeah. Um, you won't really ever have to worry about yeah. that. I, because we've always done it on a birthday. Sure. <laughs> so, but yeah, it makes more sense doing it twice a year yeah. than once a year. That way you just never forget. Yeah. And it, like you said, the yeah. price of a battery yeah. over your house What's the value down, of a life? Or, yeah. yeah. A, even, a, even your pets, not, yeah. you know, I mean, anything. So Exactly. Fires are devastating. Oh. So uh, we, we actually had a fire in one of our homes and and we always close all of our doors. We just sure. keep them closed all the time. And the, and the reason we do that is because, I don't know, someone told me one time, keep your doors closed in all your rooms so that, mm -hmm. especially when you're gone, because if the fire does break out, it contains it that's to it. That's very true. And uh, that's exactly what, what happened uh, in our home. It just one bedroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, it eventually, I think it choked itself out because it wasn't yeah, good enough that oxygen. that happens quite a bit, yeah. So. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, we call that room and contents fire. So if it's just contained to, for instance, this room right here, if your door is closed, the fire will not necessarily penetrate through that doorway or through that wall right away. It may take quite a bit of time. Right. So like you said, it may even snuff itself out because a fire needs several things to continue to grow and feed. And if one of those things is cut out, for instance, oxygen, mm -hmm. if you have a closed room and it runs out of oxygen, it'll basically put itself out. Right. So yeah, yeah that's absolutely the great advice. So, um, what are what are just like just general standard safety things that you would say that like, you, you tell everybody that they need to have? I mean, we we talked about fire alarms, extinguishers. Or is there anything else we need to know about fire safety in the home that we should be aware of? Yeah, um, it's kind of an old school thing to do, but it works. I would have on your refrigerator all your safety numbers, oh, all yeah. your you know if you needed to call the fire department directly. I mean, everybody knows what nine one one is, but right. I would definitely have you know a list of emergency numbers to contact. Mm -hmm. And also, we've kind of gotten away from it, but families need to get together and make sure that they have meeting places when they exit the home. Um, you should tell your family members or whomever to immediately exit if they feel as though there's a fire. Okay. Uh, we still use the same old tricks. You know, you feel the door to see if it's hot and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then you get out the window, you get out of the house, you don't try to save you know, your pet because fire growth in modern construction is is very very fast compared to what it used to be um, okay. back well, in let's say the 50s or the 60s why why would you say that is uh, the materials that they use in in modern construction are uh -huh. quite a bit different um, okay they have these things called manufactured uh, trusses and manufactured uh, floor joists for instance which okay. are no more than just a little piece of wood on the top and bottom with like a piece of osb or particle board in between it and the fire rating on those is three to five minutes, which means once they're exposed to fire, they will only last for three to five minutes, and then you can wow. have a major collapse, collapse. very quickly. So, so it's just not the fire aspect of being, right. it's actually... The building could collapse, collapse on itself, absolutely. Than, yeah, so whenever you have any hint of a fire, um, just get out. Don't try to save anything. Wow. Um, you know, your life is more important than any materialistic thing you might right. have. And always have a meeting place. So that when we get there and we say, hey, um, you know, where's your wife and kids? They're right there with you. you know? right. And if they're not right there with you, we know that we may have a problem where yeah, we may have, have to, to go, go in there and try and find them. So. Okay. So um, let's talk. Here's another fire problem. <laughs> I'm sure that you guys take, they have, uh, you have calls for quite frequently, but burning, burning in the complaints? county. Yeah. Yeah, burning pits. What, what's the rule on it? Okay. So the rule for burning in the county. Uh-huh is that you can burn natural materials okay. as long as they don't have any kind of unnatural materials on them or petroleum products in, okay. in particular. Okay. So if you want to burn brush or wood or something like that, that's totally fine. Okay. Um, we can tell right away because the color of the smoke is different when you burn natural materials as opposed to, build, to burning like PVC or beds or couches or stuff like that. Right. Which would probably be black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what we talked about earlier um, with the new construction is those materials have a lot of carcinogens and things like that in them. So they're okay. very, very dangerous to breathe. Um, a lot of those things, once they burn, have been known to cause cancer. So right. obviously we don't want anybody breathing that stuff in. So are you talking about um, like even the, the wood joist, you could burn that because it's wood, right? Yeah. yeah okay. As long as it's natural wood. Gotcha. Um, okay. If you, you shouldn't burn anything that's treated um, okay. because that's treated with a chemical. So okay. 
Uh, it used to be treated with arsenic. Um, they're using some different chemicals to treat them now, right. which can't burn any of that stuff. Um, also, only during the day. Okay. Um, and you should always have some kind of a water source available. Right. So make sure you have a hose, like a garden hose or something, so that you can put it out if it gets a little out of control. Right. So here's a question, because we may have broken a rule <laughs> last weekend, but we, we host the uh, Gymtown Band sure. Bonfire. I was there. Oh, are you? Yes, okay. I was. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, it, it, <clears throat> should I have called the fire department and said, hey, we're having a bonfire, just want to make you aware of it? Well, somebody did. <laughs> oh, did they? Okay. Because we were there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and that I fire, come over, that so. pile was huge. Yeah. So, oh, you know what? I think I may be thinking of Concord. I'm not sure. No, it was Pago. It was, was Pago. it just out here? Yeah, it was Jimtown. Yeah. Okay. But uh, that fire was real big. Uh -huh. And anybody who was there on scene or at the bonfire right. could tell you that a lot of the embers were kind of floating out into the okay. into the air, which is what we kind of talked about off camera. Where, right, right. You know, we don't want those embers to spread and catch anything else on fire. Gotcha. That's the biggest concern when we have big fires like that. Okay. So we were able to mitigate all that. You know, the grass caught on fire a little bit, and we sprayed it out. And, right. But uh, it's always a good idea if you're going to do something like that to contact the fire department so that we can come just out, let you just know kind of help time. out. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's no, nothing wrong with doing stuff like that. Right. Okay. We should probably know about it. Yeah, next time I promise I'll, <laughs> I'll call. Okay. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because I, uh, I think it might have been you, uh, but someone came out here. This has been a few years now. Sure. Um, but I was just burning some old cut ends of, of wood, and someone called. No. Oh. And uh, I walked out to the front, and there was two firemen walking out. And I was like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. I'm going to help you. And they're like, Ah, uh, you're good. Someone I think just that might have been me. Actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah. It's just someone called that you're burning trash. Yeah. I'm like so. Um, what about leaves? That's another thing. I mean, we're coming up to the fall season. Uh, National materials are fine. Like I okay. said, um, just make sure you keep them under control a little bit. Right. Um, you don't want to have them of... where they can't spread to something else. That's our okay. biggest concern. Don't use fuels to ignite them. <laughs> uh, we've had guys do that uh, at other departments where we got a call for the sound of an explosion because somebody thought it was a good idea to use gasoline to start a fire. Oh my goodness. So don't do that. <laughs> uh, yes. But you need to watch it at all times, especially with like the leaf burns and the, and the, uh -huh. the light brush because of all of the ash and stuff that's going into the air. So right. we don't want it to land on a roof and catch something else on fire. Right. That's the biggest concern with exactly. that. But burning leaves is no problem. Right. What about, because um, I've seen this before, where people just burn them right in the street. I've seen that before. Yeah. Um, there's really no definitive rule on that. Um, I imagine if the county had a problem with you burning on the asphalt or on the concrete, they right. might come out and say something, but I don't really know what the rules are on that. Um, I would suggest only doing things on your own property, property to kind go. of save yourself the hassle. Right. Because uh, if something was to happen and you're out on the street and you damage something, you're probably going to be liable for that. Okay. All right. Um, so tell me, a, what's the life like of a firefighter? So, uh, typically, um, so at Bago, we work 6 a.m. to 6 a.m., 24 hours at a time. Okay. So we sleep and eat there. We spend a third of our lives at the firehouse. Um, wow. And we have our routines. So we come in, you know, we got to make sure we get the important stuff out of the way, like coffee. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Once we get coffee flowing, <laughs> then uh, we, we do what we call as a handoff. So whoever my counterpart is for the next shift, whoever mm -hmm. the next chief is for that shift or to take over, I give him a report on everything I've done for the day, all the calls we've had, any problems that we may have encountered, anything uh -huh. new that's coming up, if I might have to go and do a Facebook Live show, something like that. Like this, yes. We'll let him know, you uh -huh. know, hey, this is all the stuff that's coming up. And each individual person that works that day does the same thing. So a medic will hand off to another medic, an EMT will hand off to another EMT, okay. firefighter to a firefighter. So whoever our counterparts are, we hand the shift off to them. Right. And they are now responsible for that shift. You know, we've we've passed the buck or passed the baton to them. So gotcha. Because we're 911, so we got to make sure that we keep everything flowing nicely. Right. Um, once that's done, we have all kinds of morning chores that we do. We have to make sure all of our trucks are in order. Uh -huh. um, so we have a lot of equipment on a lot of trucks. Oh, yeah. So it takes a while. Um, but once we get all that stuff done, we usually have some kind of a project. Um, but the t it takes a while to get all that stuff done. And this is in between calls. So if we get any kind of a call, obviously we have to stop everything we're doing and go to that call and take care of that. What, what's the reset time? I mean, obviously you have everything ready. Your trucks are like loaded yeah. all the equipment and then you come back and i'm sure that it can't yeah. be like the, the the most organized system anymore because <laughs> yeah. you just went through a you know yeah a, 
Yeah, so for any kind of big fires, and we just had a big fire uh, a few days ago, uh -huh. a lot of the departments in the area all work together. So, for instance, if Concord gets a fire, we go and help them. Okay. If we get a fire, they come and help us. So we went over there to help, help them with a the fire. And uh, it takes a long time to put everything back together because we use a lot of the equipment off of the trucks. Right. So we use a lot of the hand tools, all of the air packs, all of our gear gets very, very dirty. So we have to make sure that's all cleaned up. We have to make sure we're fueled up. We have water in all the trucks. We need to make sure everything is reset. Right. Now, most of the guys have been doing it for a long time, so we know where everything goes. And we okay. immediately know if something is missing. Right. So after a fire, it takes a little while to get reset. Um, the ambulances aren't too bad, depending on the call. Uh -huh. We get like a real bad trauma or car accident or something where we use a lot of equipment and make a huge mess. Right. You know, it may take us a little while to put that stuff back together. Right. So. Okay. Training. Training. Um, uh, I know just down the street here from our house, yeah. you're, uh, you were doing some controlled burns in yeah. there, and uh, one of these days you're going to actually burn that thing burn down. down yeah. So tell me about, I mean, how does that come about? So you got a... A house down here? Was it a yeah. tax sale? Abandoned? Yeah, How did um, you come across these Sometimes houses? we just get them uh, donated to us. Uh -huh. um, it's usually by the homeowner. I believe this particular homeowner donated this property to us. Um, okay. I don't know what he's doing with it after, but as far as the house itself, it's scheduled for destruction. Oh, okay. So rather than destroy it, we'll use it to do all kinds of trainings. So we'll do search and rescue training. We'll do... Um, like where we have to do a rescue off of a second story through uh -huh. a roof, you know, do roof breaches. Okay. You know, so we do all non-fire related stuff that we can in the house up until we get ready to start doing some burns or we start smoking it up. Okay. So when we first smoke it up, a lot of times what we'll do is just take a big 50 gallon barrel, steel barrel, and we'll uh -huh. put it in there, we'll burn a bunch of stuff in there. Right. So that builds up a lot of smoke in the house, but doesn't destroy it. And that gives us the ability to use our equipment to practice, train, train, train. We really can never train enough on all right. this stuff. It's very dangerous, you know. It's very complicated sometimes, you know, and any any mistake could, could cost us, you know. And I would imagine with a, fire, with a fire, even though there's probably, you understand it a great deal, but yeah. there's something could just go yeah. wrong that you can never, I mean, you can kind of predict it, but you yeah. can't still yeah, in the same it's, sense. It's controlled chaos, you know. We, uh, I tell my guys all the time, and the new guys that are coming on, you know, we train, to mitigate fires and uh -huh. we follow, I've never been on a fire that went exactly according to textbook. You know, usually right. there's some kind of wrench that you got to get in there and make some adjustments on the fly and make it work for you. It's kind of like being, I mean, I'm in the military, you, you train, you train, you train, you train. Yeah, but once the first bullet but, flies, right? Yeah, then it, it all goes to crap and nothing worked out like it. I, I mean, you still that. get through yeah. it, but you learn how to react to Absolutely. it and adjust. But. Yeah, and keeping calm, you know, and just doing our job yeah. and relying on our training goes a long way. Yeah. So. So, um, uh, let's talk about, so you're a firefighter? I am. You're a EMT? Paramedic. I mean, paramedic? Yep. So that's a paramedic would be higher than an EMT? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's quite a step up. So um, what's, the, what's the levels of that? So EMTs do a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff. They have a lot of knowledge on the human body, bleeding control, airway control, but it's a very non-invasive type approach. Okay. So when you get to the paramedic level, that's when you start getting into the, the real nitty gritty of, of uh, doing some of the more complicated things like innovations or IVs or giving medications or, you know, shocking them with electricity, you know, doing all these different things that right. you see on TV shows, you know. So you're like a combat ER. medic at that point. In a lot of ways, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff we do that we actually pull from the military uh, that's been tested in the combat yeah. field in our own practice and private practice. Well, it's not private, it's public, but, right. you know, in the private sector, I guess I should say. So, you know, going back to, you know, you're not just a fireman. What what are the credentials that you have to have to be a fireman? What are all the different hats you wear? Cause so when you first join the, the fire service, you, lose, you learn all the basics. Um, okay. You learn about fire, how it reacts, and how we mitigate that fire. Um, but as you go on throughout your career, you take, it seems like we're always going to class for something. Right. Um, so I'm a, I'm a fire instructor. I have, you know, fire officer strategy and tactics. I have all the basic firefighting engineering stuff. And then all the equipment operations. So like your pumper, your tanker, you know, all the different things that we do. You continue to take classes and get certifications. Right. And there's actually some websites you can go on to for the state 
and it'll list them all, you know, and mine okay. is like two pages, you know. Wow. So when you start off, you might only have like a page or something, you know, and then right. as you build up more and more experience and go to more and more classes, these big conferences and conventions, you get all these additional certifications that allow you to do your job so much better. Right. And then we pass that on to the next generation and then we just keep going. And I'm sure when you get all those certifications, that helps you get up to it Italian does. Chief yeah, it does. And, and higher ranks. <laughs> it certainly helps, yeah. Uh, the so, more experience you have and the more education you have, the better your chances are to move up. Right, right. So it's it's kind of funny to talk about training because uh, I teach at the Elkhart Area Career Center mm -hmm. um, and the firefighting class is right across from yeah. my classroom and sometimes I'll, I'll walk out of my classroom and you'll have all these guys full gear, yeah. air tanks on everything <laughs> and they have the, the face mask on but it's sure. got a black cover yeah. over it so they can't see and they're crawling through the yeah. halls trying to figure out where Absolutely. they're going. So I mean yeah. Do you guys do a lot yeah, of stuff like uh, that? Yeah, we do a lot of that stuff. What we're trying to simulate there is a smoky environment. So it's not like Chicago Fire or one of these other firefighting shows that you go into uh -huh. and they can see everything. It's not like that at all. Right. You really can't see anything. Um, Hollywood fires are nice, yeah, what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Smoke is very thick and very dark. Uh -huh. Even in broad daylight, you really can't see more than a few feet in front of you. Wow. So that's why they black the masks out because okay. that simulates that. So we have to rely on our other senses, our hearing and our feel and... You know, our ability to picture a building and the setup of it and which way we go. And, you know, there's a lot of training involved with that, too. But. And I, I'm, I'm sure that that has to be just a weird, odd it feeling is. when you don't know where you're going. It is. You're in the middle of a fire and you're trying to predict. Is How do you how do you do that? I mean, do well, you when you look a, at a structure, you know, like when I walked into your building here, you know, I uh -huh. know the basic layout of it. Um, right. You know, I know where all the different floors are. I know where all the stairs are just from memory. And that's right. because you I've been on the fire service for a while. So, right. I want to make sure I know where I'm going when I go to a house. And you kind of train yourself to do that. You know, your family gets a little annoyed at with you because right. every time you go to a restaurant, you know, you're pointing out all the fire extinguishing <laughs> stuff and all that right. stuff. But all the exits and escape routes uh -huh. and all this other stuff. But, you know, that's what we kind of train ourselves to do. And we all do that. And whether we think about it or not, we all do that. So is that why when uh, EMTs and paramedics come up to the house, they're kind of like, they're not doing the urgent run to get right. to the thing. They're they're kind of like calm, cool, and collected. Yes. Are, they, are they spotting out? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. We, we always, it's what we call scene size up. And you hear that over and over and over again when you're first training. Scene uh -huh. size up, scene size up, scene size up. You know, what dangers do I have to myself? You know, electrical lines. Right. You know, or irate family members, you know, who may be a danger to us or, you know. Animals. Is it, yeah, animals. Dogs, is yeah. it is it a bad call? Is it a, you know, semi-bad call? Is it kind of a not-so-bad call? You know, right. so we're always sizing up. We're always reassessing and evaluating where we're at. Right. Our situational awareness, which they do in the military all the time. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's what we do, too. Absolutely. You, you know, you would always think that someone that's coming to help you, you know, <laughs> they're not going to be mean to you, yeah. but that's never, not Unfortunately, always the Unfortunately, these days, that's not the case. Right. Uh, we wear bulletproof vests sometimes. Uh, right. You know, we have to protect ourselves. So I did forget to put out there, if you are watching and you have a question that you like to ask, Mike, go ahead and uh, ask it. we got about four minutes left, so... Uh, you know, we're still new doing to the show, fourth time we do it, and I forgot that the most important thing is like, hey, questions? send us questions. So, yeah, let's see what we got. Yeah. So, uh, I noticed also you guys do a lot of training with other departments because we when you were down here this past weekend, Concord was there. Yes. So, uh, we have a real close relationship with Concord Fire because we border each other. Uh -huh. A lot of our guys, I work over there also. So a okay. lot of the guys that work at Bago work at Concord and then vice versa. So, oh, okay. Um, we see each other all the time. We train together all the time. We go to fires together all the time. Um, so we work pretty close. I would imagine that's a, a pretty big deal because obviously if it's a bigger fire, one, one department may not be able to take care of it. Sure. So you need to know that the other people from the other departments yeah. so that you know how everybody works. Oh, yeah. It requires a lot of resources sometimes. Right. So, yeah. Yep. So uh, how much do you work with uh, law enforcement? I mean, that's probably another uh, big part. Constantly. Yeah. Um, you know, we know almost all of the county cops because we see them all the time. Right. Uh, they help us with, you know, dangerous patients or dangerous situations. Um, they help us with traffic, you know, with right. big accidents and stuff. So they're very, very helpful. Um, we have a really good working relationship yeah. with them. I don't think I ever see, you know, like if there's an accident, there's always going to be a fire truck, uh, an ambulance, and a, and a cop Absolutely. car. Absolutely. It's, it's hand in hand work. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Well, Mike, I appreciate you uh, coming in. My We're pleasure. out of time. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we'll have you back again on the yeah, show and we'll talk more to. about it. And, you know, if you have something particular that you would like to talk about to the public, you know, get some information out there, 
please, you know, give me a call and we'll have good. you back on the show. Yeah, I'd be happy to. All right, great. All right. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in tonight. Don't forget, we'll be back here once again in the tool shed. It'll be 9 o'clock next Thursday night. We'll see you next week.